Grocery and gourmet food category is hands down my favorite category for all new retail arbitrage sellers. And in this video, I have four reasons why that is and why I'm so bullish on grocery. I'm also gonna share with you my personal experience after that. I've done retail arbitrage for a year and a half, and it's just the last couple months that I've really gone all in on online arbitrage. But when I was doing RA, grocery was my bread and butter making up the overwhelming majority of my business and is really what propelled me to where I am now. And I'm gonna share with you exactly how I did it, okay? And before we get into that, I do wanna mention, if you're a new seller, you're not allowed to sell grocery and gourmet food right off the bat. And I am someone, and everyone has different school of thoughts, personally, I think you should focus on what you're allowed to sell, especially if you're on a budget, rather than learn the ropes while you're spending money to get engaged in products. There's so much that you're allowed to sell right off the bat, focus on those, learn the systems, learn the processes, right? Make your mistakes, and then when you're ready, go and get engaged in whatever you want. Now, I say that to say grocery to me, in hindsight, is the one exception that I did do it and I did not regret it whatsoever. I went hard on it. And of course, I should mention there's a million ways to make a million bucks on Amazon. This is just coming from my personal experience. So first up, what I love about grocery is that items are naturally replenishable. Replenishables is like the key word in Amazon, right? Products that you can buy time and time and time again, whether it be whenever you want, whether it be quarterly, twice a year, whatever the case may be, on a consistent basis, and just know that you're gonna make money on those, okay? Think about K-Cups, for instance. When somebody orders them, whether they do a 12-pack, 24-pack, 72, stuff for the office, whatever it is, once it's consumed, then they typically order more of it. So that's a great product versus, let's say, uh, just to make a made up example, you only buy a new phone every couple years. Well, some, some of you are buying it every six months when a new one comes out, but you know what I mean, right? It's not a consumable, it's not something you buy time and time and time again on a very frequent basis. The second thing I love about grocery, especially for newbies, is that there's really no moving parts, right? When it comes to grocery, we're talking about dry goods. We're not sending in raw chicken breast to Amazon, at least not yet, maybe one day. But um, because there's no moving parts, that means you're gonna have very low returns, right? There's no batteries, there's no malfunctions. Yes, somebody could return it because they don't want it, they could make up whatever excuse they have, but I've experienced very low returns because is, unless you're returning it because you've changed your mind, there's really no other reason to do it unless something just got completely destroyed in packaging, which could happen to anything. So as a newbie especially, I think we all like having a lower return rate not having to deal with complaints or risk any type of negative feedback. So I like grocery for that reason for beginners too. Number three, something that's really nice is that if you get into grocery doing retail arbitrage, and if you're anything like me, I lived in a populated area, Publix was our local grocery chain. Shout out to Publix, banging chicken tender subs, if you know, you know. But they're in the Southeast and where I lived, there was probably no exaggeration, 50 of them in my county. And I lived in South Florida and it was very populated. But my point is this, if you put in the time and the effort to figure out Publix, even if it's just on their buy one, get one freeze or whatever it is, if you do well at one, now I have 50 other to work with just in close proximity to me. So yes, it's work up front, but once you do that, it's so rinse and repeat, you can drive a mile, then another mile and you can hit all these different stores as opposed to certain things. Even if you're doing retail arbitrage, there's only one store every county or every 20 miles. When it comes to grocery chains, they're typically everywhere. And then number four, something that I absolutely love about grocery is that it really taught me and opened my mind about multi-packs and variety packs, right? So again, using coffee, let's say it's holiday time and you have K-cups from a brand that are pumpkin and you have some that are I don't know, eggnog, right? And you make this two pack where there's already a two pack listing or a variety pack, I should say, one of each. It's adding value and it's creating listings that, not, or that aren't gonna be that common. The way that if I were to take my phone and just scan a pumpkin thing, that one pack would show up. So a lot of sellers might be able to jump on that. It's harder to find the multi-packs and the variety packs, so less competition and more value to the consumer ultimately means more sales for you and more profits. 
So I'm a huge, huge lover of multi-packs and variety packs and grocery is really where I dove into that because of all the different combinations that are seemingly endless that you can make. So now, like I mentioned, I wanna share with you how I really took the grocery category, went, went heavy in it, and it really propelled me to where I am now. I learned the ropes on the category, I made good money on the category, and so anyway, Publix, every week they would have a buy one get one free. Typically there was items that were dry goods that fit the bill, like think of like nuts or think of um, cereals. I did really well with coffee. And so what I would do on Thursdays when it came out, I would literally go to the store and I would take pictures of the literal shelves. I would go home, sit down on Inventory Lab and I would do research on these products. Let's just say Starbucks Vanilla K-Cup, Starbucks Vanilla K-Cup 2-Pack, Starbucks Vanilla K-Cup Variety Pack, and type in all these keywords and look for everything I possibly could. And then I would have a shopping list. So I knew, like I said, there's 50 Publixes in my area. I would go early in the week when the, st when the shelves were full from the buy one get one freeze because what I started to notice was that later in the week they wouldn't replenish the shelves until the deal was done. So early in the week, I would go hard. Earlier in the week, meaning early in the BOGO cycle. And then what I would do is have that shopping list, go, go to all these different Publixes, but what, while I'm at each Publix, and I could hit 20, 30 in a week, each of them also have store-specific uh, clearance sections and shelves. And then I would scan all of those and do really well, and then it would open my mind to new products, new brands, new categories, like for instance, if I came across vitamins or supplements that I paid $5 for on clearance and I would literally make $25 profit, which happened regularly, I said, wow, if I can find this product for regular price online, I could still make five to 10 bucks and that happened. And then it opened my eyes to that brand and to vitamins and supplements and other examples like that. And maybe the supplements were vitamin C and now I said, wow, people love vitamin C. And I'm just giving you an example of how that, those clearance shelves just lead you to another path and another wrinkle. And so you're going to the store regardless for the BOGOs. If, if nothing else, you'll make 50, 100, 150 bucks. Then you hit the clearance and you're learning new things. And lastly, while I'm there, I would also challenge myself. Spend an extra five minutes scanning a part of a shelf that I've never scanned before. And then do that at the next store. And over time, if you're consistent, think how much that adds up. And if, again, if you find one good product, well, now you can buy that product at 50 different locations, right? So it's very compounded, front-loaded, but pays off in dividends for a long time. So for those reasons, and as you can see from my personal experience, that's why I'm so gung-ho about the grocery category. It just checks so many marks. It's replenishable, it's seasonal, variety packs, multi-packs, clearance sections, and that there's so many grocery stores, chains, that there's a lot of them in a lot of locations. So if you don't know where to start and there's one thing you're willing to get engaged in as a beginner doing retail arbitrage, I would say do grocery. I'm Jonathan, this is Duke Does Amazon. Thanks for being here, we're on Instagram as well. Questions, comments, topics, put them below. Have a great day, I'll see you guys soon.